Hey, 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 what's up, Webster? This is the Electrical Energy Unit Goal 2 Video Notes. So, in this goal, students are able to define current electricity using circuits. So, uh, first we have to know what is current electricity. Current electricity is going to be one of the vocabulary words in this goal. So first, we know what static electricity is. We know that it is a buildup of a charge on an object and can have a quick release of energy, like when you get shocked. Um, that word static. Static tells us it's not really moving. It's not continuously moving. It's mostly static. Hence the word. Um, current electricity is a continuous flow of electricity. All of our gadgets, all of our electronics, the computer I'm using right now, all of these things need a continuous flow of electricity. It can't have like quick bolts of lightning. Um, it, just, it just needs a continuous flow. So that is current electricity. The similarity between these two is that both have to do with the movement of electrons. Um, best answer I got for current electricity on a pretest, the most up to date electricity. I thought it was an awesome answer. Um, what is the rate of current electricity? The rate of current electricity is the amount of charge that passes through a wire in an amount of time. Okay? So the amount of charge that passes through a wire in an amount of time, which brings us to amperes or amps. So ampere um, is actually someone's last name, the name of the guy that invented it, Andre Marie Ampere, uh, born around the time of the American Revolutionary War in France. He was a scientist that grew up in the French Revolution and um, he did a lot of experiments with electricity and charges and he came up with a way to measure electricity. An amp is an amount of charge passing a point in one second. Okay, so this picture, if we could picture electrons moving through an area and if we were counting the number of electrons moving through that area in one second, that is similar to, to what an amp would be. Okay. So, wire A or wire B. If wire A has more amps, this means um, that more electricity is flowing. There is more charges or electrons flowing in wire A than in wire B in one second. Okay, so that's amps. Does electric current automatically exist in a material? No! No, it does not. Um, I can have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but it doesn't mean that electric current is automatically going to exist because there has to be a complete path for the electrons to follow. If there's not a complete path, there's not going to be an electric current. There also has to be a power source. So to produce an electric current, the charge must be able to flow from one place to another. Take a look at this picture. Okay, if we look at this picture, let me put it on top here. If we look at this picture, um, it tells us why this is the way it is. Okay, so this light bulb was lighting up. There's a complete circuit with a power source, so it works. Here we don't have a power source. It's not going to light up. Here there's not a complete path, so that's not going to work either. Okay. So there has to be a complete path for the electrons to follow. What is electric current, you say? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the electric current is a complete, unbroken path through which electrons can flow. Um, so here we have two different kinds of circuits. We have a series circuit. We have a parallel circuit. This is a complete unbroken path. This symbol represents a battery. These two symbols represent light bulbs. 
So complete unbroken path through which the electricity can flow. Okay? There's no break in this path. Um, and so the electricity can flow through the entire thing. If there was a break, it wouldn't be an electric circuit. Electricity wouldn't work. So why is a racetrack like an electric circuit? Well, um, in the same way, I mean, picture cars like electrons. They're following a path, you know, and so they're moving. But if, for some reason, there happens to be a break in the path, okay, <coughs> if there happens to be a break in the path, then the electric current is not going to flow. Okay, so let's say, let's say I break the path. Bam! Or here. Bam! That means that the cars can't pass, and since the cars can't pass, the electric current is going to stop. If the piece of the track is missing, the car stops. So much like, you know, a gap in the wire. Or sometimes there can be a resistor. A resistor is something that slows down the path of electricity. Okay, so um, a light bulb would be an example of a resistor, something that slows down the path of the electrons, but still keeps it going. Okay. Closed versus open, pretty simple. Closed is a complete unbroken path. This would be the picture example. Electrons can completely throw, flow through this from the battery to the switch to the bulb and back to the battery. So complete unbroken path. Open means incomplete or broken path. The switch is open, so it's broken. Uh, there's not a wire here connecting, and so it's broken. So this would be a open circuit or open path. Okay. So in the battle of closed versus open, closed would win because it's the only one that would allow electricity to pass. How does electricity flow through a circuit? Electricity will follow the path of least resistance. Quick story. So whenever I wanted to do something when I was younger, say go out to the movies or spend a night at a friend's house or stay out late, I would always try to ask my dad because it was the path of least resistance. My dad would most of the time say yes, whereas my mom, uh, sometime, most of the time she would say no. Okay. That was my path of least resistance. And don't pretend like you don't do that, because everyone does that. But we try to take the path of least resistance, and electricity does the same thing. Um, which explains why these birds hanging out on the wire, all talking about their new black suits, are not getting zapped. Okay, They're not getting zapped because the electricity is following the path of least resistance, which is the wire. Now, is there some electricity going through the birds? Yeah, there is. Some of the electricity is going through the wire, through the bird's foot, through its bones, through its body, back to the wire. Okay, But the path of least resistance is straight through the wire. So most of the electricity is passing straight through the wire. Um, so another picture example uh, say we have electricity flowing through here, most of the electricity will pass through here instead of through all of the resistors. But you are still going to have some electricity pass through the resistors, just not as much. Okay. So most of the electricity will follow the path of least resistance. Some symbols that we will use to draw circuits, okay, battery, couple lines, wire, pretty simple, light bulb, an X, buzzer, kind of looks like an upside down bell, motor, switch, we have an on and an off switch, some other things, uh, sometimes light bulbs can be resistors, look like a zigzag line. Uh, <laughs> 
we won't use these very much, but sometimes we might. And those are our symbols that we will use. Okay. So you may want to pause these this video here and write down what our symbols are. Here we have an example of what sketches look like. Okay, so you know, series circuits, two light bulbs are represented, batteries represented, wires. Okay, so what that would look like in real life is more like this. Um, but we use this as a sketch. Okay, these are kind of like international signs of battery or light bulbs. Same thing over here with a par with a parallel circuit. We have our power source or battery and the symbols for light bulb and the wires. Um, so with a battery, we have electrons that are are flowing. So if it's negative, electrons are trying to get to the positive. If it's positive, it's trying to gain electrons. So um, we still have electrons moving through here, and that's why eventually batteries don't work anymore because they eventually become neutral. Uh, they have no charge. And so eventually the, the electrons equal out in a battery and it you know, doesn't have a charge anymore. Um, but that's how electricity is going to flow in a circuit, and that's what symbols look like in real life. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's all. This is what a snow day would actually look like. Um, we didn't have one of those today, but oh well. Thanks for watching. Come to class with questions later.